my truss rod channel is a little bit too deep. The truss rod doesn't sit flush with the top of the uh, neck. And so I'm going to plane it down and uh, get it level so that the, the truss rod is flush and that the bottom of the truss rod channel isn't too low down, too close to where I'm going to be carving the neck shape. <laughs> The black paint on the metal chuck of the cordless drill uh, rubbed against the wood. But it's not a problem because I left plenty of wood on there to plane away, which is what I'm doing now. Wow. From uh, an initial glance at it, it looks really good. Okay, so it needs to come down just a touch. I want to just be sure that I'm square here. That's very, very, very good. Just checking the plane. Looks good. That'll do. Don't want to do any more than that. It's beautiful. It's better than I could have hoped for, actually. Now the top is nice and flat and nice and level. The only problem is it's too deep. And I don't want that channel peeping out when I carve the neck or the back of the neck. Now there's still loads more to come off, although that does feel better. A lot more to come off. I'm trying to get this ebony fretboard level and it's proving difficult. I've decided to go with a leveling beam now uh, to try and get it flat because the planes weren't doing the job. They were kind of all over the place. And I think that's to do with them not being sharp enough. I'm gonna level this off with a uh, leveling beam with some green aluminum oxide Sanding paper, this is a uh, 120 grit. Got the direction markings on the side of my uh, leveling beam to make sure I'm going in the right direction for the sanding paper. I just hope I remembered when I put it on to put it in the right direction. I've got to dust off both the sanding beam as well as the fretboard uh, occasionally to prevent clogging because this stuff clogs really quickly as well I've got kind of a high point which is almost gone now but I can see the scratches in the fretboard where I've been I'm also attempting to keep the ebony dust because it makes good filler along with a bit of PVA wood glue. When it does clog I just I'm levering it out with a, a blade. It's probably not the best way to do it. I've yet to find a, a better way of doing it but one of the best ways to unclog sandpaper of course is with a pencil eraser. That will get most of the dust off and help to prevent clogging. I don't want to get the uh, the rubbers, rubber dust, 
mixed up with the uh, ebony dust because I want to keep the ebony dust. Like I said, I want to uh, make some some filler with it. So I like a very modern, gentle radius on my fretboard. And what I'm going to do is I need it nice and flat on this side because this is the side I'm going to level. Now, I'm not the best with planes yet. I'm not the best at sharpening planes yet. So radiusing a board with a plane is scary as hell. So instead, I got one of these. It's a radiusing rafter bit. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on the router table. And then I'm going to route one side and then the other side. This is a very gentle 18. So that needs to go just above the center line of the fretboard. I want my center line to be about at the tip of the router bit over there. So I need this fretboard to be flat in order to use the radiusing bit. Because if it's not flat, then I'm going to radius a hump into it as well. That's good enough for the girls I go out with. <laughs> yep, I got that from somebody else. I do believe I have a fretboard that's as flat as I need it to be at this point in time. I think any more is just fiddling. I didn't realize before just how messy ebony is. Man, it's messy, but wow. Just turns out super smooth. All right, before I put the truss rod in, I want to see if it fits flush. If I seal up the truss rod hole and I place the fretboard down, I can feel a bit of back pressure from the air that can't escape between the fretboard and the neck, which means it's a fairly solid fit. I have a neck. With a brake angle, neck through, have a truss rod. It fits into the neck and with a little push, it fits flush. I have a fretboard that seems to fit flush. Next thing I need to do, screw up these edges and glue it down. I wonder. No rattle, good sign. So next thing you'll see as part of the neck makeup is I'm going to glue down the fretboard, marking this fretboard. So first things first, what I need to do is I need to find the center line. So I'll do that like so. Forgiveness when you do make some mistakes. From that point where I'm going to cut, just on the inside of that, 250. So just on the outside, so that marking was about right. Give myself just a little bit of space for forgiveness, which is going to be that tiny little extra piece of wood that's going to take me about a month to carve down to size.
Hi everybody, I hope you've been watching me um, put together the fretboard or of the uh, shark fin guitar. The special, it's a electric log with wings attached to make it look like a shark fin. It's going to be a rather interesting guitar, I hope it works out. Uh, you'll get to see it. And so we're at the point where I'm going to be gluing on the fretboard. I have actually done some of these steps already, but I need to know before I hide it forever, before I glue up the truss rod channel, I need to know exactly how deep it is. And so I have already done this step. I need to measure the depth of the truss rod channel. And it's a bit deeper than I was hoping for. Thirteen millimeters is still a bit deep. And what I'm going to do there is I'm going to mark, I've actually marked it already, just mark it with the, there. I don't need to worry about damaging the top edge here because that's going to get cut away regardless. 13.8, just call it, uh, damn it, I'm just losing my pencil lid. 13.8 millimeters. It is 13.8 millimeters. The depth of the truss rod channel, which means that if I cut over that line I'm going to have a little truss rod channel peeking out of the back of my neck which would be very unfortunate no further than that so if I go to there and I put my volute in here directly beneath the nut which is just about this point here if I put my volute there I should be okay. Then the volute itself will hide the truss rod channel and I won't go too deep. The next thing I need to do is I'm going to use the uh, toothpick method of uh, making sure the, the fretboard doesn't slide around. On my previous guitar, I didn't worry about locating pins for the, uh, the neck or, or for, the, yeah, for the boards I used for the neck. Or for the fretboard and they did move. I'm not going to make that mistake again. I've got my center line marked on here. You might be able to see it. I've also got it drawn down the edge both sides. But you can see that there is a center line. I can see the, the pencil mark for the center line. And I've also got the center line drawn on the neck itself that you can see here all the way to the back. Yeah, there's a curve in the back. New feature, new design. <laughs> I've sanded the back of the fretboard to make sure that it is as level as I can possibly make it. I have my tools organized in a pile. It sounds flat-ish. One slap. Yep, sounds flat. Sounds like it's engaging. There's no rock. There will be plenty of rock when it's finished, but there's no rocking on the uh, fretboard at the moment. Located there and there. That should be the final resting place of the fretboard. I've got my locking nut here, which I'm going to put in there for purposes of checking. It doesn't appear to be over the hanging over the uh, edge where the brake angle starts. That first fret isn't an issue. I don't need to worry about that first fret at all because where I'm going to drill the hole is going to be up in the top corner over here and you'll see if I do it at just the right place, I'm going to have loads of clearance. When I shape the neck, the locating pin will be cut out. So I don't need to worry about the first locating pin. The second one is going to be a little trickier because that one may end up in the final build. 
because I don't have as much room at the end of the fretboard as I do at the at this end. 24th fret is going to be an issue. I need a longer ruler and I have yet to find a ruler that's worthy of my money. I've got plenty of rulers that I've paid for that were a complete waste of money, but they were very, very cheap. But because they were cheap, they were a complete waste of money. Oh yes, by the way, here's my body. Book matched. It's for some kind of other instrument. Should put the clamps on first, actually. Clamp. Yeah, it moved. Right. Let's see if it's in position. So I can put the locating pin right in here. Should be safe enough. And that one will get cut away. Okay, I have position. What I need now Electric drill on the full battery. All good. Toothpick is two millimeter. It appears to have worked. Perfect. Not going to get it off. Yep, I can. All right. Great. Okay, time to fit the truss rod. Wait. I want to be sure it's not under any pressure at all. Tension. Taping up the truss rod channel. I've got the 10 millimeter edging tape that I'm going to use to um, cover up the truss rod hole channel. Don't want to use too much. Don't want to get too far under the fretboard. And it is, seems to have sealed it up virtually completely. Tape. Insignificant little piece of tape that is only meant to prevent rattle. And I am not going to work on top of my plans the next time. 
just check it. Right, so I've just got to spread the glue, glue, <laughs> the goo, glue, glue, onto one of the surfaces. Now it appears I need to spread it onto this surface here. I really wanted to do it on the fretboard, but the pins won't come out. I'm rather happy with where the pins are, so I'm okay with that. I'm going to leave it as it is. Here we go. Fretboard on. use a clamping core and let the clamping begin okay so I am going to be clamping it from there to there and then on the other side from there to there Should I use every single clamp in the shop? Why not? I've got the locating pins to make sure that it doesn't drift. clamps. Right, now down the middle. Trying to escape from that. I think I can get one more in. I got one more in. Can I get any more in? That is it. There it is. I hope to God it's in the right place. You'll find out tomorrow. So stay tuned to TV TV and you'll find out what happens next. All it needs to do now is dry. So I'm going to let it dry and I'll catch you guys later. Bye. Wow, look at that. Four minutes left. Hi everyone. It's the next morning and I'm about to remove the clamps.
and it goes straight in the bin. All right, I'm not putting them away anymore. I'll sort them out later. What I want to see is the neck and fretboard. Okay, I'll put this one away. It's on. All right, so next job to do, think about this carefully. So first things first, remove the excess glue. I need to trim the, uh, the sides. I want the sides flat because I want to use the sides as a guide for radiusing the board with the uh, radiusing rafter bit. Must be cautious. Do not want to be taking any wood off. Just some glue. Once the, the fretboard is radius and I'm happy with that, then I can worry about the position or the height of the nut and then I can cut away um, the section for the body. So in the body there's going to be a pickup, a gap, a pickup, a bridge and pretty much that'll be everything. So a lot of that's going to be removed. So I'm going to cut away under there to leave enough height for the fretboard. A very slight angle. It's not like a tunomatic that needs a, a great big swooping angle dip down for the neck uh, it's only a half a degree that i need to cut out there between the the fretboard and the bridge cut that away also need to include space for the top this top which is currently 4.2 millimeters then that will go that will become the body over here which of course is not going to be an acoustic shaped body, it's going to be a shark fin V. So what's next? Radiusing the fretboard. So before I can radius the fretboard, I need to trim off the excess here and make sure these sides are flat. All right, that's today's job. See you guys later. Thanks for watching that video, guys. There's plenty more to come. So why not click on subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you'll get to see the future videos when I bring this idea of mine to life and hopefully demonstrate it before the close of the Great Guitar Build-Off 2021 competition. I will see you then. Have a great day, guys. Keep up. Well. Bye.